could announce James Madison later this evening. We're hearing around potentially nine o'clock. Madison could be announced as a Spurs player. Um, before we talk about Madison, though, I want to welcome in our guest Chris Colwyn uh, from the Spurs Chat podcast, uh, by the way, to talk about Harry Kane. I'm very interested, Chris, to get your views on this Harry Kane news. Um, first of all, Bayern Munich sending a bid in for Harry Kane, which obviously was rejected by Daniel Levy. No surprise there. But you might have heard me say at the top of the show here um, that Harry Kane has in principle, whatever that means, agreed personal terms with Bayern Munich. What are you making of all this news? Addy Flex, good evening to you. Um, personally, um, I don't think Harry Kane will be on his way to Bayern Munich. I do believe that he will be a Tottenham Hotspur player uh, at the start of next season. And if he is, um, then I think that Daniel Levy will uh, be confident about him signing a new contract uh, at some point next season. Um, but... I just think that Harry Kane is a family man. He loves Tottenham Hotspur. He wants to win at Tottenham Hotspur. Um, he's currently building a new house. Uh, his wife's pregnant at the moment. I can't see uh, them just getting off and moving to Germany, uh, if I'm completely honest. And uh, But with that said, I think that every single player has a price. If, and it is a big if, a club like Bayern Munich do actually put in an offer of around £100 million. And of course, I think that Daniel Levy and the Tottenham Hotspur Ball will seriously consider it. Uh, because, of course, that money could be used to uh, generate this Tottenham Hotspur team, rebuild the Tottenham Hotspur team. And let's face it, you know, one player, um, you know, you've got to be thinking about the future of the football club and not worrying about one player, even though he's a Tottenham Hotspur legend. But I can't see him leaving Spurs this summer. Chris, that was actually going to be sort of my next question I mean how as a Spurs fan would it be unforgivable as a Spurs fan to see Daniel Levy let somebody like Harry Kane leave for free or as a, as a Spurs fan are you more in tune to trying to get keep him another year trying to get him to sign a new contract because you want to see him see out his career at, at Spurs or do you think no if 100 million is there we can, we can potentially go in a different direction it's time Harry Kane's done everything he can for us I don't think any fan will begrudge him um, moving from the football club. And I think it will be a very interesting situation next summer. If he doesn't sign a new contract with Spurs, then of course he can uh, walk away. That's why I said that I think if a, if an offer of around £100 million came in, I think anything less that Daniel Levy would just automatically reject it. Um, but Harry Kane spoken a number of times about Tottenham moving in the right direction, showing ambition. And if he doesn't feel that they're doing that, uh, then, of course, he will look to move away. I think that this transfer window is extremely important for the football club. Mm -hmm. And I think that James Madison deal is extremely important to get deals like that done very early. I think the football club needs to show Harry Kane and other top stars at the club um, that we are showing ambition and we do want to move on as a football club because, of course, we're about to start the season uh, with no European football. And, uh, you know, European football is an absolute must um, it has become the norm at Tottenham Hotspur. So uh, it's going to be very strange next season. But as a football club, we need to show ambition. We need to get a number of signings um, over the line um, in this summer transfer window. We also need to offload a number of players as well. So there's a lot to do. Uh, but if you want to keep the likes of Harry Kane at the club, you just need to show ambition and you need to uh, you know, try and move the club on. Just a quick one from me, Chris, from a Manchester United perspective. Is it as cut and dry and as simple as... If John Murto sends an email to Daniel Levy asking about Harry Kane, does it stay in the spam folder? I would be very surprised if Daniel Levy sold Harry Kane to a Premier League rival in this transfer window. 100 million? Does it matter? 110? I think, if it, I think if it was 100 million from a, a European club, I think that uh, he would seriously consider it. Um, I can't see a 100 million pound offer or whatever offer from Manchester United. I can't see that being. I'll give you Martial as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll chuck in Harry it, Maguire it, 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 next it, to Eric it, Dyer. It definitely stays in the spam no. folder. Okay. If you say players like Maguire <laughs> and Martial. You know, Chris, I actually agree with you. I think Harry Kane stays. I think um, his love for the club, you can't question that. You're right about the family. The wife is pregnant, building a house. I think he just stays. I think he loves the clubs. I think he loves the fans. He's got a reputation with the club now and not everyone wants to move on not every player wants to move on and not every player cares I think as much as we think about winning all the trophies I think um, he'll try and win something uh, with Spurs let's move on to a player that we know is coming to the club and that's James Madison medical done looks like Spurs are going to announce he's signing uh, this evening how big a deal is that for 
you know, a, a, a left-sided four player, a left-sided midfielder player who knows the Premier League, scores goals, England international. I think it's a big signing. Addy, it's a statement signing. I'm so glad as a Tottenham Hotspur fan that we're seeing statement signings like this, big signings like this, so early on in the transfer window because all of us Spurs fans are so used to waiting around right until the end of the window for Spurs to get the business done. Uh, we start pre-season in Australia against West Ham in just under three weeks' time. So it's very important that Ash Postacoglu has statement signings like this to take on the summer tour and to work with. Um, but, you know, he is going to bring so much to Tottenham. He is a, he's going to be that creative spark that we've been missing since Christian Eriksen left uh, some years ago. Um, but in this transfer window, uh, the priorities were a goalkeeper. We've now got one of those in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got the creative midfielder in James Madison. And now we ne- need to look at the defensive reinforcements um, because, in my opinion, players like Sanchez, Tanganga, Eric Dyer, um, you know, we need to offload these sorts of players now. We need to improve that back line. And when you think as well, last season, so many players at Spurs underperformed. Uh, Richarlison, uh, Hunmin Son, um, Kulisewski, uh, Basuma, um, where they've been fantastic before in Premier League seasons. And of course, uh, Benton Kerr has been a huge miss for Spurs as well. So, you know, with the likes of Madison now coming in uh, to this team and to this squad, you know, we've got a number of quality players at the team. Um, I just feel like it's now a few tweaks and the, the defensive reinforcements, we can really push on. Um, but we've, you know, although it's been a great start to the window, it must continue for Tottenham because this is a huge rebuild and we have got to back this manager. You're talking about that that rebuild there and, and backing the new manager, Pesta Koglu. Is, are, are you worried as a Spurs fan that you could be out of the top six and sort of be ousted? You know, other teams moving on ahead of you. If you look at the emergence of Newcastle, you see what they're doing. They're in the Champions League. They're, they're buying strong or about to keep buying strong. Liverpool will, will get better. You see what Chelsea are doing. I think there's even a worry for teams like Villa and Brentford. Villa, yeah. Brentford and Brighton. 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 You know, the, yeah. team, teams like that that, that yeah. you know finished mm. um, really strongly last season in and around Spurs. H- how, how much of a worry is that for you, Chris, that if you, if you do get this wrong or don't get it quite right, you might even do all right, but it just might not be enough. How much of a worry is it for you that you could permanently drop out of that top six? It is a worry, Flex, because, uh, you know, we, we couldn't even get a Europa Conference League spot this season. We finished in eight spots. So we know exactly where we are right now as a football club, but it is now about moving on um, and getting back in those European spots. Of course, we're so used to playing Champions League football. That is exactly where we want to be. You've got to keep up with the other teams. You've got to invest a lot of money. Um, but ultimately, the decisions must be right, because when you think back, uh, to previous transfer windows, we signed Tongyon Dombele, a record signing, Giovanni Lo Celso, £100 million on both of those players. They didn't even play for Spurs last season. They, they, were, they were shipped out on loan. So the decision-making must be absolutely vital. For me, I'm very old-fashioned. I, I like players with Premier League experience. So for someone like James Madison to come in, you know exactly what you're going to get. Um, so hopefully he can deliver... Um, you know, for Tottenham, and uh, hopefully we can get in a more a, a couple more statement signings because we need to be pushing the other teams. We need to be uh, getting back into those top European spots. And uh, you know, as you guys have been discussing this evening, every single team around us is doing fantastic business at the moment. So Spurs need to keep up. And when I go back to the Pochettino days, we went 518 days without spending a penny in a transfer window. Uh, we cannot let that sort of thing happen again. You know, you need to keep refreshing in transfer windows. But this summer, as I keep saying, this summer is not just about refreshing. This is a major rebuild. Poster Coglu has got to be backed. He's on a four-year deal, which I'm absolutely delighted about. He wasn't meant to start work officially until Saturday. He was a Hotspur way today. He's very eager to get started. And, uh, you know, he's got a huge job on his hands. But this is a major rebuild and, and lots more needs to happen. So far, so good, I think, for Spurs as well. When, when you yeah. think they've got a new goalkeeper and a midfielder for 57 million quid. I mean, that, that, that's yeah. good going. That's really good going. Um, especially when you consider that they, they were maybe close to buying David Rea for 40 million. Yeah. And they've got a good goalkeeper for 17. Um, money coming in as well for players. We've spoken about players coming in. So players going out. Harry Winks potentially going to Leicester for 10 million. Um, what do you make of that? Good move for everyone. Um, Good money in. Um, A good move for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, I don't think uh, there's any chance of Harry Winks getting another game um, at Tottenham, regardless who the manager is. Um, So many players need to go out the door. Um, Brian Hill could possibly move out the door. Uh, Perisic, 
Hugo Lloris, uh, Celso on Don Bella. It'd be interesting to see what happens with them, whether Costa Cogli will give them another chance, although they've had a number of chances under uh, various managers at the football club. Uh, Joe Roden, Sessegnon, Tanganga, Sanchez, Dyer. Um, there are so many players that Spurs could possibly offload in this transfer window. And, of course, if we can offload even half of them that I've named, um, it will bring in you know a fair bit of money for Posta Coglu to then reinvest. Just a quick one on Posta Coglu. What is the expectation from him? You've, you've gone in for a whirlwind of managers. You've gone for the managers who have been there and done it, who you expect to get you a trophy in, in Conte and Jose. Yeah. You've gone different routes. Um how do you expect him to do and how patient do you think Tottenham fans will be and how seriously do you think he'll take sort of cup competitions as well where historically um, Tottenham have kind of just wobbled in them and kind of thrown them away a little bit? Well, from what I'm told, uh, Flex, from all Celtic fans, he takes all of the cup competitions very seriously. Now, I'm a fan that goes home and away to every single game. That's and when I, turn feeling, up to yeah. some of these, when I turn up to some of these away games... And we put out a weakened side, Sheffield United, for instance, last season. Yeah. Um, it was very, very frustrating. We haven't won a trophy for 15 years. We, we need to put one in the bank. So I would love to see Postacoglu take these cup competitions seriously. I, I really would. Um, but the expectation, I think that if we're seeing entertaining football, because it's been pretty dull, it's been pretty drab for all of us Spurs fans, pretty much, I, I think it's fair to say, since the Champions League final defeat back in yeah. 2019 against Liverpool, it's been pretty drab. And you mentioned there the, the managers that we've had, Jose Mourinho, um, Antonio Conte, and Nuno Espirito Santo was there for a short while, but it hasn't been entertaining. So I think that if Spurs fans are seeing the entertaining football that we're all being promised, I think that there will be time. Um, I think the board are going to give him time because um, they've signed him on a four-year deal. Um, I think that in these first few weeks of, you know, he's not even officially started yet, and we've got two good signings in already. So I think that it's showing that they, they want to back him. Um, and move the club forward. It's very important because we've got to get back into Europe. Um, but I would love to see Boston Coglu take cup competition seriously, put a trophy in the cabinet very soon because, um, you know, players like Harry Kane um, deserve a trophy and uh, all of us Spurs fans haven't seen one in so long. Cheers, Chris. Appreciate you coming on, mate. Thank you very much. Chris Cowlin there from the Spurs Chat Podcast. All right, if you love TalkSport, why not join the club today to link your Alexa and TalkSport accounts? Just say, Alexa, ask news broadcasting to log me in and we'll send you a link to your Alexa app. You only